Yo, what's up, Waveform? Marquez here. Obviously not in the normal podcast studio yet anyway for this little remote intro. So I am in uh, California right now, San Diego, for an Ultimate Frisbee tournament. It's nationals, actually. So that's why I'm out of town a little bit early. So what you're about to watch is a podcast recorded on Tuesday instead of the normal Wednesday. And what that means is we recorded that right before the news dropped of the Cybertruck delivery event officially happening uh, and it's going to be November 30th in Austin, Texas. Austin, I think? Yeah, Austin. So what you're going to see is people who don't know if that's about to get announced, but I just wanted to pop in remotely and say, told you so. <laughs> now, there are still some questions. We don't know, number one, exactly how many deliveries there will be. They're going to do some sort of event, I imagine, kind of like the Model 3 event. But is it going to be 25? Is it going to satisfy our bet of 25 before the end of the year? I think so, but we don't know. And then the other is Andrew's thing of, does this count as a delivery if you have to go to pick it up? Is it a pickup or a delivery? I mean, it's a pickup, but is it a pickup? Is it a pickup pickup? Sorry, it's a dad joke. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and finish this tournament off hopefully over the next couple of days. So wish us luck. Pride of New York, if you wanna follow us, USAU Nationals, but just uh, wanted to jump in real quick at the top and say, yeah, sounds about right. Anyway. Take it away. Hey, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. This week, we've got some new tech. We've also got some new stories, some new features, some YouTube updates. Apparently, 30 new features coming your way. So if you're watching on YouTube, some stuff showing up here. Wow. But also, a uh, new Apple Pencil, new OnePlus Open. That's the name of the phone. Um, and some new meta stuff that we all actually kind of like. Yeah. Which is which pretty is, cool. Feels wrong. Good. No, <laughs> I'm rooting anyone. for good stuff to come out, <laughs> even if it's from companies who have done horrible things. Um, but first, <laughs> someone has to explain this analog N64 to me because it's very hyped. People have been talking about it at the studio, and I don't know why it's so hyped. So someone please explain what this is. Back well, when we had childhoods. Yeah. Have you heard of Nostalgia. I've, I'm aware of the It concept. sells very well. It does. Oh, so this is so analog <laughs> made the pocket, which was like a Game Boy, yes. but like modernized. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my best Much interpretation. bigger, brighter screen. You could play games off of a micro SD card, so you could play ROMs on it. It mm. was like a pocketable. But what they did was cool was you could still play your, if you had your old Game Boy cartridges. Yeah, I was you am I imagining play. that? So you can put an old cartridge in the mm -hmm. new thing and it mm -hmm. works. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So is this like a Nintendo 64, but the same yeah. thing? So, you know, what's ironic about this, um, even Nintendo is bad at emulating Nintendo 64 games because it's very difficult to emulate them. But there's this technology called FPGAs that's been getting very popular recently that yeah. allows you to directly like emulate it. Like it's basically emulating the hardware instead of just emulating it in code. And so that's what analog mm. is doing. So people have had trouble making M64 emulators for like a while um, or getting them to run at a good frame rate without any glitches because okay. even nintendo on the nintendo switch has if you have um switch plus yeah the one online one you online can play, like, switch online games. you can play nintendo 64 games but a lot of them like aren't really up to snuff with the original um so yeah analog is now making a modernized n64 it's nice. very they haven't announced much they just said it's an n64 it's coming out in 2024 and it will have 4k resolution which feels kind of wow. wild because if it's just the it's same insane. games <laughs> but if it's just like imagine playing like wave runner or mario 64 just in 4k it's Amazing. just like what but it's it? still just blocks blocks <laughs> yeah it's just bigger four k blocks, blocks 4k with with blocks textures yeah. and ray tracing <laughs> is there a price do they say any uh no, no. They, there's no. barely even a picture it's just like enough of the side of the console to know oh, what it is um geez. but did you ever play that in 64 no I don't think I've ever even Ocarina of Time known anyone the greatest game of all time. No, I've I've never I don't think I've played an N64. Yeah. Unless we did one for Retro Tech and I'm forgetting. I don't think I've ever even it's touched it. It's not retro before. enough to be on Retro Tech, I don't Ye think. Uh -huh. I mean I it's, hope it's, it's not. No, if it is, is I'm gonna be it's real super, sad. It's super retro, but it's not like the original game console. You know? Fair. Yeah, was, but did, we had a Sega Genesis and that wasn't original. Yeah, but either. Genesis and NES are around the same generation, right? Uh -huh. I don't know. Is Genesis around N sixty four time? I thought it was. Maybe it is. I, I literally. I think it's a idea. little before. I'm trying to imagine. I'm sorry. In my Please don't yeah, someone's me. gonna get very don't upset. Cancel me. I remember playing the Genesis at my cousin's, 
but I believe it was pretty old at that, or it was older at that point. And then I remember a friend getting that in 64. Mm. Like, Nintendo? I think it was 96 when the 64 came out. Yeah, yeah. that 96. Sega nice. released the Genesis in 89 in Japan. Okay. Yeah, so or 80 80 in Japan. Yes, yeah, so that's more NES territory. Okay. Um, but the Nintendo 64 was the first 64 bit console, which allowed for. Right. 3D Didn't games that. and that kind of stuff. Embarrassed to not know that. <laughs> That's what sense. I do remember from Retro Tech. But a ton of insanely re legendary games came out. Super Mario 64, legendary. Yeah. Super Smash Bros, the first one ever, legendary. Uh, Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim, legendary. Zelda Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, considered the best Zelda games of all time by Gold, me. GoldenEye. Goldeneye. Earthworm Jim just sent me down a whole rabbit <laughs> hole in my head that I yeah, didn't know was that there. <laughs> I did not make that up. That is a... Have you ever seen him? <laughs> no, I've definitely <laughs> never seen Earthworm Jim. Let's get uh, let's pull up Earthworm Jim. What was this even? How, do you, how would you describe? Or was this in? How do you describe so it was, how he looks like Marquez? Uh, it's a dude. It's so worm in a muscle suit. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. It's weird. It's funny because like I think he had the, anchor arms. I think now. this may have been out before N sixty four. I f feel like you might be right. Yeah. I don't even think this is who I'm thinking of. Does you anyone think remember ba like Battle Worms or whatever? No, do you remember there was like this worms. Clay Fighter game on the N64 that was like horrible? Yeah, it was called Clay Fighter 63 and a Third, and it <laughs> was the most unhinged game. Ooh. Oh no, it had Earthworm Jim in it. Okay, yeah, oh. that's exactly what. It, With her, it, it was like fire Earthworm. It was like <laughs> fighting. Why is this game forty four dollars? <laughs> yeah. Well, so okay, nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, honestly, Bingo. my sister and I had this uh, NHL hockey game that you could play hockey, but you could also beat each other up. NHL hits? Uh, I think it was called like NHL 64. I mean, okay. to be fair, that's like 45% of hockey. Yeah. No. Hey, hey, hey. But you could like, you could 55. kick and punch Sorry. while you were playing the actual hockey game. And if you did it enough, it would set you into this arena where it was just a fighting game. Nice. And then it would go back that's to the really hockey. That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a boxing game inside of a hockey game. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, how much do you think well, this thing is going to cost? That's my, if you're guessing. Com. How much is the pocket? The yeah. pocket is two hundred or yeah, two hundred and nineteen dollars. Then that is sixty four is probably going to be. It's probably going to be three hundred. I'm very interested in the controller too. Which I think that they teased the controller. Did they? Like with like I missed shadow. that. I want to see. Do you know what the controller looks like, Marquez? It is like an iconic controller. Uh, no. Can you try and draw it for me? <laughs> <laughs> you want it's, me to attempt? It's to a very wild controller. So I would like to. And audio listeners, we will describe what he is drawing here, but. It is not your average controller. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it, and when you see it... Is it the one that's kind of like <laughs> this? And kind of like that? And has like... I, I feel like you were going kind of... Like can that? you put the buttons on? No. <laughs> uh, maybe one of these. Maybe... Oh, there we go. One of these. You barely see anything. Oh, okay. It kind of looks like a Switch Pro controller. At it least it would fit shadow. on that side where the C buttons yeah. are. Or were those called C buttons back then? Um, the C stick. I don't know. This is was not on this. Yeah, C buttons. That looks Am I like wrong? an Ocarina. That, I think that's the Gen <laughs> the Sega Genesis controllers like that. Oh, uh, whoops. I, I truly have no okay. clue. Okay, the, the, <laughs> the Sega Genesis console is shaped like that. <laughs> one of the two. Oh. Well, Marquez drew. I drew one where the one handle was way bigger than the other one. Is that what you're? You're in for? the right ball. If you added one more handle. Yeah. Have you seen this? <laughs> Can you describe this oh. now from what you think it looks like? Oh, it's it's three handles. <laughs> yeah. Because we have three hands on it. With it. <laughs> okay. I want it's to know the guy that designed this. It's a pretty infamous controller. because I can see why. It's kind of a terrible design. Can you? Yeah. It's, no, it's iconic. It, it is iconic. It deserves, How would you hold that? Because it's memorable. <laughs> I would hold it just like that. Just like That's one hand I've, on each side. I've no. never held it like you that. Hold, you hold it with you, hold your, it, you grip the center yeah. one so you can move with it your with your left your thumb. hand. Oh, yeah. If your game requires the D pad or whatever the joystick, yeah. then the you're... The D pad was usually like easier, like item selects or stuff like yeah. that, where like you could go off the controller. And there was That's... a Z button on the back that you could hit with your. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a trigger center. underneath. Underneath. Yeah. Are we off the rails? Is this <laughs> no? What's going on? Anymore? This is gamer talk. No, now we get to put an N sixty four controller in the thumbnail and get the <laughs> greatest CTR possible. Fair. Fair. Yeah. But, anyway, right. um, yeah. So nostalgia. 
Exactly. Cells. Speaking of nostalgia, they are also releasing another analog pocket in all the clear colors. They already pocket. released it. They released and it, it sold out within like three minutes. I'm not I was going to say, how have they not done that already? That's yeah. what well, I pictured every Game Boy to be. Because the yeah. first one took forever to it come out. It was a out bummer. They, wow. they did extremely limited quantities and they put like a day and time that it would happen. And then within like two minutes, it was sold out. I so. know that you this is a eBay for twice smaller company, now. but like. Make more. You know that thing's going to sell. <laughs> yeah. Part of the fun is How? not being able to get one. They've done is a it? lot of limited ones. Like, they did, like, this glow-in-the-dark version of the analog it pocket. That's sick. That's, like, a gray, but it glows green in the dark. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. The, the like, uh, purple... God, man, the purple yeah, transparent the purple, oh, translucent purple oh, is so legendary. good. Legendary. Nostalgia noise. I had that Game Boy Color. I had this Game Boy Color, too. Nice. It was the best. Well, it's kind of like the default color one. Sort of, yeah. They also had gray and blue. And per and they had, they had a solid purple. Hey, guys. Well. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That anyway. Was a, I'm sure there are people reminiscing with us right now. Guys, this is a new comment tech your, podcast. Comment no, your, no more old tech. Yeah, but we're this going, is new old tech. We're going new tech. New What's old tech. New, tech. new Apple Pencil. No, oh, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> brand State new Apple art. Pencil. And this is new tech here. So we got to talk about what's brand new. USB-C port, new. That's the only new Check. thing on this pencil. New. No, no pressure sensitivity. New. No pressure sensitivity is new. Brand new. Yeah. Engravings, not Let, there. Less new. is more, baby. <laughs> not new because the first gen didn't have engravings. That's true. Yeah. They made this Nostalgia. giant chart. Okay, so <laughs> just to catch everybody up, uh, Apple, everyone thought that this week, and by the way, we are recording this on Tuesday and not Wednesday because Marquez is out Wednesday through Friday. National. So it could be that Apple announces a new iPad, and if it does, I am sorry. No, no, How no, no, no. If it does, Marquez is flying back and we're re-recording this episode. <laughs> if that happens, I'll record a segment remotely apologizing for not knowing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sold on that. But what we do but, have today on Tuesday. Yeah. So so Apple sometimes does this thing where like for three days in a row, they'll just make a newsroom announcement and announce a new product. In previous years, it's been like a new baseline iPad or maybe a new Mac Pro or something. Maybe not the Mac Pro. I don't know. Today, they just announced a new Apple Pencil. It's the stuff that doesn't deserve its own event. Yeah. So it's a USB-C Apple Pencil. It's basically the new baseline and it's they're making it obvious that they are transitioning everything to USB-C because mm -hmm. right now the baseline Apple Pencil is lightning and only one iPad has lightning anymore just right the $330 just the $330 base one so that would lead me to believe that they are imminently going to announce a new baseline iPad that is USB-C as well contextually that is a perfect prediction that probably will happen but we don't know yet yeah yeah do one of you want to read the spec sheet and the comparative analysis versus the <laughs> other apple pencils okay it's like basically <laughs> they took the newest second gen apple pencil and then just took some stuff out of it yeah and gave it a lower price of 79 dollars. that's a good way to put it so yeah. it's got usb type c and it charges via usb type c yeah which you might be thinking wait a second the other one, the like new Apple Pencil we've all had for a while, charges via a magnet on the side of the iPad. This one still attaches with a magnet, but doesn't charge that way. Or pair. Or pair. Or pair that way. You need a USB-C cable. So that's one thing they took out. Uh, pressure sensitivity is another thing they took out. Why would they? That, so uh, for uh, some reason, there are people out there who are buying a $79 stylus for their iPad, but don't care about pressure sensitivity that's i guess a, apple's obscene. done the math maybe they believe that done that's the a thing i don't know yeah um it also no longer supports double tap to change tools ah! it's just a <laughs> weird art i swear art this artificial gating is like my new biggest pet peeve in tech well they might have like, taken parts out of the pencil though it might not be artificial possible. it's possible yeah the last thing they took out was engravings mm, nice tell me that's artificial gating it's the same shape it's the same mat yeah it's the same pencil. That's true. They just well, they can. It's the supply chain, right? They're leaning out the supply chain, which saves on money, and then you can charge less. I wonder if using the same exact supply chain over a larger volume. Well, it probably is, but the lead time is higher mm -hmm. over a large volume, right? Maybe. Maybe logic. Apologist. Would, it feels to me like like they're just going to confuse a bunch of parents during the holidays. Speaking of. In terms of confusing, which is helping this, the naming is very confusing <laughs> yes, between the three is. of these now because when I see Apple first gen and that's the lightning port, 
I assume the second gen is going to be the one with closer features and maybe just the updated to USB-C. But no, the second gen is the really nice one that has everything. Yeah. And then USB-C is now actually the cheapest one out of all of them and kind of arguably the not the least amount of features. Wait, it's cheaper than the Lightning one? Yeah, yeah. by $20. What? It's $79. Because the Lightning one has pressure sensitivity. But this one has hover, which, yeah. but only on M2 iPads. Because they have ever, it's... Okay, Apple, if you're listening, call the good Apple Pencil, Apple Pencil Pro. Yeah. Why not put Pro in this That's one? It makes so do. much more sense. I rarely sense. advocate for adding I know. Pro, but like, that actually makes a lot of sense. It yeah. does. Get rid of the first generation one and make a dongle that people can buy to charge their first generation Apple Pencil. I think that exists already. It's one of the funniest A male products. lightning to male USB-C cable. Did yeah. you see how you plug in the USB-C on this new one? It's like you open up the back. It, it opens, yeah, and it's on like this side now instead. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Big plug Magic in. Mouse vibes. Yeah. Uh, Wait, but can you write no, with it while quite. it's charging? You, I you can still, um, believe I believe so. I really hope you can use it while it's charging. <laughs> I it really would come out the that. side, but I think it would be high enough on the pencils yeah. to yeah. be yeah. okay. No, no, yeah. Physically, yeah. I know one could do that. It's would Apple let you uh, right while it's yeah, charging? Yeah, really should. Okay, the so, Lightning one you can't use while it's charging because it's sticking out the side of your iPad. Yeah, it's unless you do a wire unless you use the version. popsicle. Yeah. No, use the use the, the included popsicle. double uh, dongle. Yeah, Giant double dongle. Popsicle. Yeah, yeah. So get rid of the first. Get rid of the Lightning one and and sell a dongle. Na name the USB-C one just Apple Pencil and name mm -hmm. the good one Apple Pencil Pro. That's yep. all you gotta do. You're gonna confuse a lot of parents out there yep. who are just trying to get their kids a Procreate pen. No, Come I'm on. confused. And we do this for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're doing it just to confuse you, Adam. They dislike you. It's working. This it's... definitely didn't deserve an event, so I'm glad they did the yeah. press release. I would have went things. to the event. <laughs> you do a compilation of like all of the Apple events, all the Apple newsroom press releases that don't get an event and like power rank them in terms of how good of an announcement they were. Mm. This is like pretty middling, not that great, but there are some things that they've announced that were like kind of solid yeah. and they didn't get their own event and I thought that was fun sometimes. That would have been crazy if they did M1 as a press release. That would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys have any other thoughts on the pencil? None. 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 Nada. Okay. We should, we should talk about all these new YouTube features, but first we should take a break and before that, we should do trivia. Trivia. So, as always, answers at the end. Yeah. First question. Time Magazine named the N64 the machine of the year in 1996. But what two games were originally launched with the console? One point per game. What two games were launched Indeed. with the console? Yep. Hmm. Hmm. I think I have one. There's one I really want to say, and I'm pretty sure we're thinking the same one. Mm. You too, Marquez? Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> this is not this is unfair. How dare this you? Is, this is an unfair Spyro? question. If you don't want to go off the rails on nostalgic games, we should just throw to the outbreak <laughs> right now because you're really, I'm itching. <laughs> Support for this show comes from Wix. Web agencies, you're gonna like this one. Let me tell you about Wix Studio, the platform that gives agencies total creative freedom to deliver complex client sites while still smashing deadlines. How? First, let's talk about the advanced design capabilities. So with Wix Studio, you can build unique layouts with a revolutionary grid experience, as well as elements that scale proportionally by default. No code animations add sparks of delight, while custom CSS gives you total design control. But it doesn't stop there. Bring ambitious client projects to life in any industry with a fully integrated suite of business solutions from e-com to events, booking, and more, and extend the capabilities even further with hundreds of APIs and integrations. And you know what else? The workflows just make sense. So there's built-in AI tools, the centralized workplace, the on-canvas collaborating, the reuse of assets across sites, the seamless client handover, and that's not all. Find out more at wix.com studio. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about YouTube. What? It's kind of a fun on YouTube? place. Yeah, Who? YouTube. So on we're on YouTube. YouTube. I don't know if you guys know. A lot of you guys listen on audio only, but many of you watch this podcast on YouTube. And some of you may know, I actually have my own YouTube channel. Hmm. Uh, hey, we told you you're not allowed to plug that here. I started a few I years ago. Specifically it's going told really you well. this is the podcast. I just figure, I, I think it's, it's like a, a good overlapping audience. <laughs> I think people would want to know about it. I review tech <laughs> products. 
the origin story of <laughs> it's way for first so we've been using youtube for a long time and we just got like a big youtube feature drop that's how i'd explain what just happened like a pixel feature drop. kind of except it's all well it's all coming soon so i guess not actually <laughs> it's exactly, exactly, like right. yeah. it's basically the same thing uh slowly rolling out but there are uh literally three dozen new features coming out both in design and functionality and some of them are really cool and i wanted to wow. give some of my thoughts on some of the best stuff um, a sort of a high level overview. It's like some UI stuff, some feature stuff, some functionality stuff. Just lots of quality of life changes. Quality of like. life. That's a, yeah, exactly. I need that in my life. Uh, one of the high level Evergreen. ones, mm-hmm. and I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Is there's a stable volume toggle? So if you're watching some videos, you, you've heard those videos where it's Dude. just like quiet, 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 blasted volume, yes. but you turn your volume up so you get destroyed. So audio normalization. Basically, it sounds like a compressor. You just turn it on. Yes. And it's funny because I wonder if this gets turned on automatically for videos that deserve it or if you, the toggle is just there after you've already gotten blasted, you know? So I started blasting. I feel like it should be on I automatically. started blasting. Like there should be an AI that watches, that scans YouTube videos for comments for people who are like headphone warning and then uh, it just toggles this automatically for those videos. Maybe. Oh, this looks very confused. Here, I'll just read what it says exactly on the YouTube blog post. The YouTube official blog post reads... Uh, easy on the ears. We're giving you better audio control on mobile devices. Rolling out starting today, stable volume will be automatically turned on to reduce jarring differences in volume for an overall improved watching and listening experience. And there's a little animation showing a pop-up with a toggle that says stable volume, so you can toggle it on or on. On or off. <laughs> on or off. <laughs> on or on. <laughs> on or on. So on it's or automatically, automatically on. And I assume, even though it doesn't say, that that means that one video with dramatically different volumes will be normalized? Maybe. That would be great if that's yeah. what it is. That's what it sounds like to me. I would like that if it was like between videos, each video was like the same volume because... Right. So it's like an account, like an app toggle. Yeah, because if you're like if you're like making a video that has sort of like a a slope in volume as part of the experience, it would suck if the app automatically like normal. It does say like everything. jarring differences though. So like I'm sure it could uh, has a. I would hope Peace. it has somewhat of a range, but there are videos out there that just suck at volume. Yeah, the autofo- the last autofocus video. Did you watch that guy's video? He did a video yeah. on the Corvette. Probably the Is that podcast before Wave any of these spin-off channel. Yeah. <laughs> There's just another yeah. YouTuber I know who does so these the, car videos. Oh, uh, it's called cool. Autofocus. It's a great title for a channel. You it, it is out. a great title. But he did I a video. Agree. He it's usually does electric cars. Genius thought of that. He usually does all these quiet EVs, but he did a video on the new Corvette Z06 and oh. he does the remote start in the video and it just blasts my headphones. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Dang. Like I know it shoots what on an idiot. phone, but like Is that how he started the video? No, it's like halfway in too. So you've settled in, you've turned the volume up a little bit, and then you just get crushed. I'm going to report phones. that channel. Honestly, I like that channel, but I say it, I'll do it too. Yeah. yeah. Report Every him. Mr. Beast video where he starts yelling at the beginning. But at least he starts right from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, so you, you don't know like get used get. to one volume level and then it changes. Yeah. Anyway, so that's one of the YouTube features. Um, okay. Another one is straight rip from TikTok. I don't know if you guys have had the hold to fast forward on TikTok. So this is an iPhone. It started off iPhone only and now it's on Android as well. Wait, TikToks are like 30 seconds and people still fast forward through them. There's some longer TikToks. And so uh, people will hold I down on the time. left side of the screen and it'll fast forward. It. It'll watch it at 2x speed. Hmm. So you know how you listen to podcasts sometimes at 2x speed? Or David listens to every video on Apparently, YouTube I watch at 2x every, speed. <laughs> every YouTube video I watch at Which 2x speed. Which is insane behavior. But I'll let you I'll let It you was slide. giving me anxiety the other you day. You had it the out the same loud. amount of information in half the time. Yeah, twice but as would fast, Would you watch guys? a movie at 2x, though? I watch all YouTube videos at 2x. But, like, what if it was a Why really good there? video I with, will, like, okay. pacing I will say, and music... Uh, yeah, one of my friends made a, a video that was an hour and 15 minutes long recently, and I was watching it by myself at 2x, and then I watched it with a friend at 1x, and the experience was better at 1x, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Who would have yeah. thought? But it depends if <laughs> I'm trying thought? to absorb information. Wait, it might be even better if you watch it at half speed. <laughs> wait, Just if we're wait, following wait, wait, the trend, wait, wait, wait. No, no. if we're following the trend, I, you cut it in two half. Pieces of data a trend or just <laughs> it could be well, if it's the a, start of a trend. The problem is if it's a 30 <laughs> FPS video now you're watching it at 15 FPS. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I think you should watch oh. it at 30 FPS. Anyway, my that's point tough. is, 
on YouTube, you can now hold down anywhere on the screen. Uh, so just press and hold down anywhere on the player to automatically bump your playback speed to 2x. Hmm. Once you get to the part of the video you want, just let go. It goes back to 1x, just like TikTok. Great. This feature is on web, tablets, mobile devices. I th- Makes I th- sense. I think this is great for less of a reason than TikTok, but like when you get longer videos, especially on mobile, scrubbing is so hard because you can skip like five or 10 minutes really easily if it's like mm-hmm. an hour plus long video. So if you can just scrub through a minute or two really quickly, yes. it's way more precise in that sense. Yes, improvements to scrubbing. I'm glad mm-hmm. you brought that up because one of the other ones they've improved is larger previews while you're seeking through a video. Uh, I think oh, it's I just like that. full screen now because it would be like the little Good. window at the bottom and you'd scrub oh. through. Now it's just like you see full screen exactly oh. what you're scrubbing through. Why that, was, why that Always should have done that, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. That's crazy. So those are some of my favorites. I also, there's one here called uh, Search by Voice or Song. Ooh. So Uh-oh. it's basically like Shazam, more or less. The feature reads, using AI to match the sound to the original recording, this feature will route in the next few weeks and be available on Android devices for now. You play sing or hum a song and youtube will pull it up for you like pull I want the music video pull up whatever's on youtube it might just be the song I want or it might be the music video. this but for all youtube videos like oh. this is cool for that but yeah. what if i'm like oh i watched this guy he was really funny and he like this intro was kind of like whatever and but you can't remember their name whoa you gotta so, wait for bard bard yeah but just imagine like That'd be sick that's an llm model for sure like what if or people are like Oh yeah, I watched that video on the iPhone. The guy said his, he was like, "What's up? It's MKHBD here." And but the, and then it's like, "Oh, you're thinking of Marquez Brownlee." You know what I suspect? I suspect that this may be using parts of the same tech that is the copyright ID system. So mm. the way it has like audio hashes, and if you have copyrighted music in a song, it can automatically identify it. Or if you have something that's really close to copyrighted music, it might automatically get picked up under the same umbrella. I feel like this is kind of leveraging the same tech where if you're next to a radio and you hold your microphone up to it and you're like, YouTube, what is this song? Yeah. It'll be able to find it because it's, it's going to hear the same audio hash and it can find that thing on YouTube. Yeah, Go- original. but Google has this already too, just in Google search. Yeah, you so now like YouTube is built search. into the YouTube Why app. Why is this in YouTube and not YouTube music? Well, it probably will get big. Is it kind of the same at this point? Yeah, more I or guess. less. Who knows? Yeah, that's true. That's the Google. That's the ultimate Google question. I think this sounds cool if you could do it for videos that aren't music. I will say, if you look at this animation, there's a tab that says voice or song. Uh huh. So oh, so if you just want someone's song. voice? I wonder Wait. if there's like a. Oh. So you can do an impression of someone and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pull yeah. Up. yeah. Yeah. That would be sick. You that just sounds recite like, a... like four or five minutes of the Waveform podcast. Well, yeah, it's like, oh, that's episode 193. <laughs> so if I go, my, my diet is 15, 15% Cholula. <laughs> it, do you just try to do an impression of yourself? <laughs> yeah, and you I like messed it up. Change your time. voice. Really bad. <laughs> Wait, that's a great point. Voice or song, and the song says placing or hum a song. So, like, but what, what is the voice? Yeah, the voice, do you have to try and match the voice, or it doesn't do even you just have to, like, it. say things that they say, like an opening? Does Renee say that in his video? Uh, let's go to what Renee's. Let's go to our field reporter, Renee, Renee Ritchie. <laughs> Renee Ritchie, coming in from the field. If you're looking for a song, you can play, sing, or hum it, and YouTube on Android will go find the video for you. Yeah, so it's unclear what that voice tab will do, uh, or if it's anything different from singing, or if it's just acapella. I don't really know, but it's there. Voice Hmm. or song. Find stuff on YouTube. We don't seem to be clear on on either of these. (laughs) And like two of them, I'm like, I love this. And then I read it more. I was like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to introduce you to your favorite one right now, Andrew. A feature? Mm. This is your favorite feature. Right, for right sure. Um, oh. Anytime Uh-oh. anyone Swift. in <laughs> any video oh. Oh. says the word Taylor like Swift. or subscribe, oh. which is happening right now, the buttons in the YouTube app subscribe will glow. Like, like, subscribe. Is it is it working? Like, I don't think this is out now. Like, Comment, <laughs> like, or subscribe. I'll read the I'll working. read the feature. How about I read the feature? I'll okay. read the feature. Yeah. Okay, so we can be further confused by it. <laughs> I think this one's pretty. <laughs> this one's a little longer. Animations that celebrate meaningful moments. Hmm. Okay, we wanted to bring more life to the video watching experience. <laughs> so now, vibes. <laughs> so now, when you're watching on web or mobile, the page may react to what a creator says. 
Now, when a creator asks viewers, so now when a creator asks viewers to like or subscribe, a visual cue on those buttons will appear in sync with the video. Crazy. And once fans smash that button, it actually says that, mm. a subtle explosion of playful sparkles will reward them. Top oh. comments also automatically rotate so you can scan the best commentary from the video. Wait, they rotate? What does that mean? <laughs> Top comments automatically what rotate. Is that? Oh, they, they get swapped out. Oh, uh, okay, sure. Uh, I was imagining it was <laughs> spinning around. Like, Why is it changing direction? That's weird. Okay, they rotate in and out. Okay, got it. And for new video uploads, we added a new animation that updates view count and like count in real time for the first 24 hours to show how many other users are engaging with what they're watching. That is interesting. We that finally get to know real time? real time for 24 hours. That's going to be like... <laughs> it depends on the video. If it's a Mr. Beast video, yeah, when there's 6 million views in 6 hours, it's just going to be... Are they going to refresh like every second? This is so interesting. Wow. Real time, because they did the huge push like a year or two ago to just be like nothing on Social Blade or anything had anything past the like point. So it would be like 10.4 million or like 5.2K. Yes. Like, But that was just public channel subscriber counts subscriber. which is a little more oh i guess views vanity metric you're right you're right but remember when it was this might be something people watching don't remember but remember when youtube videos all stopped at 301 views yeah remember that i thought it oh it was 301 three, I thought I thought it was like pause, sometimes it was yeah. 304 three, yeah, sometimes yeah. it was 300 but they would always stop around 300 views and that was like a that was like a pillar yeah. of YouTube culture was if your video slammed into 301 views and then paused there for a while, that video was popping you off. You made it. You passed, you blew past 300 views. And they had to verify that they were real oh. before they picked up the real time count again. Interesting. So I would upload, no, no, not to humble brag, but I would upload a video <laughs> and it would hit 300 views and wow. it would not change for a couple hours and then it would, bam, it would come back and it would be at 10,000 views. Cause they were, <laughs> cause they were verifying that those views were real. And at some point, I don't know what year it was, but they just, figured out how to verify views continuously in real time. And so now if you refresh the view count on a video, every couple seconds even on a popular enough video, you'll get the updated view count. But the first 24 hours we found is always lagging behind. So, so this is interesting. This is true. Yeah. What we'll notice as creators is the real time view count in the analytics that we look at on the back end from YouTube mm -hmm. are ahead of the public facing view counter. And I think that that probably will still be the same. I think the live updating public view counter will be slightly behind as they Didn't, verify views. Did I miss something or did it say that that will be So it will be in real time. It will be in real time. Well, I don't think it'll be in real time. I think it'll still be up. It'll just update without you refreshing the page. I think that's basically what's happening. They use the word real time though, right? Um, I think it's like the, yeah. li the Twitter uh, real time like counter. That like goes up every few seconds. It ticks up by like exactly. twelve. Yeah. Oh, wait. It'll be like that. Maybe it won't actually don't be use in real time. time. It won't yeah. actually be in real it's time. It's not real time. It's every <laughs> few seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be rounded and it'll be verified views, but it will count upward without you refreshing the page. That's pretty wild. So you could be watching a video that has <clears throat> two hundred thousand views, and by the time you finish the video, it has two hundred and two thousand views. Yeah. And it will say that on the page as you're watching. I think that's kind of. I cool. think they're trying to do like. There's a there's this whole thing that happens on Reddit where like you're scrolling Reddit and if something has a lot of upvotes, you're incent it makes you feel like you should upvote it too. It's like crowd mentality. Yeah. And I think they're trying to get people to watch videos that they see the view counts going up and they feel like they want to be part of the get experience of everyone watching at the same time. Like a slot machine. It's the whole reason people. <laughs> 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 That's the whole very... reason people watch live content. Like you could watch streamed, like a uh, played back content, but when something's live, people feel more incentivized yeah, to watch it because sure. it's happening in real time. And there's not anything necessarily better about it. There I mean, is. I, I get you want to see it happen in, in real time, real, real time, <laughs> not <laughs> YouTube <laughs> bullshit real time. Yeah. But I don't know. That's like with every like weird little phenomenon, like when we had the eclipse, it's like I could have just watched that on TV later, but yeah. like I was dying to see that 30 seconds yeah. in yeah. real, real time. And. If you see it, yeah, if you see that thing pinging up, you want to be part of it. This is, this is also reminding me of another feature that you guys may or may not remember on YouTube. Uh oh. If you, if you have trivia questions were about old YouTube features, I would crush. There's another old feature 
back in the day, and this was probably in like 2012 or 13 or something like that. Is that back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. Woof. In tech years, Ten that's years a decade ago. Yeah, in ago. It's a tech decade. years. It yeah. was in real, last in, generation. In real time years of the decade ago. <laughs> yeah. A while ago. There was a feature where if you were signed in, it would show underneath the video the usernames of everyone else watching the same video at the same time as you. Oh, my God. Yeah. Old. I yeah. do not Holy remember crap. that. Oh, yeah. What? In Holy real crap. time. That's wild. So on, like, popular videos, there would just be a gigantic scrollable list of all the usernames of everyone watching at the same time. Oh and I think gosh. it would even count. It would say, hey, uh, 600 people are watching with you. But if it was just like a random obscure video, sometimes you'd be watching and another username would pop up and there's just two of you watching the video. <sighs> And it's, it's their username. And you could click on it and look at their profile and see where they're from and what their them? name is. Yeah. Oh you could God. DM them. This was back when YouTube had a messages and you could DM people. That's YouTube crazy. misconnections. Yeah, dude. <laughs> on Craigslist, we were both watching the Mr. Beast video at 7.34 p.m. last night. Man, you know what I did the other <laughs> day? Shared a us. moment. I went on uh, in my YouTube analytics and they showed the box of subscribers and you could sort by reverse chronological. And so I went back and found the first, first subscriber. ever subscriber to the MKBHD channel. And they haven't logged in in 10 years, but I went to their channel and I tried to find who they are. And it was really hard. It was a fellow golfer. Oh. And it was someone who, without revealing too much, was a fellow junior golfer around the same age as me. When I uploaded my swing, we subscribed to each other. And like, wow. he also has an old golf swing video on his channel wow. from a decade ago. Interesting. Challenge so, accepted. I really this sounds like a long that. form episode. Oh, God. No, what would, <laughs> what, this would be 30 that's years old now? Adam. It's just some 30 year old dude now. What true, would be yeah, funny wait. is if that guy only remembers the golf swing video and has yeah. no <laughs> idea that you've that's, turned into like a tech YouTuber. That's probably like, true. That would be hilarious. It would be really fun to find this person and interview them and be like, do you still play golf? Because he might not even play golf. He's a tech YouTuber as well. There are YouTube videos of his golf swing online the same exact way there were of mine. Yeah, you have to show us this after where we're not doxing anybody. Yeah. Yet. Well, I wasn't able to find much more than what I told you, but yeah, yeah. but you have a whole team that can help you. That's find That's true. <laughs> that is true. All I'm saying is YouTube adds features, and they are there are like pillars of internet culture for me anyway. I, I kind of view time through YouTube changes. Is that weird? I don't know. I spent a lot of time on YouTube, so probably kind of weird. Honestly, that's a little weird. Yeah, sorry. I just gave up too much. Can't wait till it's like your kid's 10th birthday and you're like, oh, yeah, you were born right around the time when the subscribe button (laughs) glittered (laughs) anytime you said it. (laughs) I do view time in terms of like when a certain phone launched, though. I just, the way you guys were talking about nostalgia about game consoles earlier is the way I talk about the different colors the subscribe button was over the years. Like, that's. See the face you're making? That's when I when you say the N64 is going to have a new version with this emulator. I'm like, remember when the subscribe button was yellow? <laughs> Let's go. And everyone said point at the yellow button, and then it was gray point the next year? Point at the yellow button. Yeah. Dang. Good times. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, new YouTube features coming to a, come into a use, YouTube near you. Um, I, think, I feel like we should take a quick break. We got a bunch of meta stuff to talk about, and also the OnePlus Open. I'm holding it right now. What's the meta stuff we're going to talk about? Like it's, oh. we're talking about talking about. So it's meta stuff from meta. Who? Meta, meta stuff. Mm-hmm. You'll see what I mean. We'll get there. Hmm. But before we get there, let's do trivia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. All right. I had an N64 <laughs> question, but Marquez, <laughs> I was inspired this by your call to shit. action. Really? And yeah. now I have oh, no. a defunct YouTube features. Can we question. have both? Three questions? No, I'm, this is this why is not? Mine. Three questions. Let's and do it. And the first it, one has baby. two points. So now there's four points on the board. Four points on the board. All right. Beep boop. Can I see the score real quick? No. One, two, carry the one. <laughs> now, <laughs> Andrew. Andrew, you, you have the potential to make some serious damage this week. Potentials, my this middle is giving, name. Like Chris Paul hits a huge three to cut the lead to forty six <laughs> Who's Chris Paul? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he was Wayne Gretzky's line mate. Oh god, okay. in- line mate. <laughs> Do they have that in hockey? What is that? Yeah. What? I want. I think to that's a reasonable the last question. Twenty seconds, but I, I think that's a reasonable we should question. Leave it. We should leave it. Just, just leave it. Anyway, in 2009, nobody answered questions around here. 2009, YouTube introduced an experimental lightweight version of their site. Sure did. What was it called? I was hoping you would ask. <laughs> I was hoping you would ask. An experimental lightweight version mm-hmm. of YouTube, the app, the site, the service. Think about it. 
And now, what's for the my N64? second question, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, sorry, we're not used to it. rhythmically. This is so strange. We think of the big innovation on the N64 to be 64 bit 3D graphics. But in 1997, the N64 introduced what now essential smartphone feature to its controllers. Oh, I know that. Because I'm a god. I think I know. Andrew knows it too, because he's also a god. Marquez is a god too, but not in the same way. Web agencies, you're going to like this one. I want to tell you about Wix Studio, the platform that lets agencies deliver exceptional client sites with maximum efficiency. So with Wix Studio, you can build unique layouts with a revolutionary grid experience, add sparks of delight with no code animations, or take more control with custom CSS. Native business solutions let you cater to any industry, and you can extend them even further with hundreds of APIs. Plus, the workflows just make sense, from the centralized workspace to on-canvas collaborating to reusing assets across sites. And that's not all. Find out more at wix.com slash studio. Welcome back to the Waveform Podcast. We got some hardware to talk about. This is, it's that time of year. It just doesn't, it doesn't stop. It's October. We got some new hardware. We've got the OnePlus Open. Open. Not my favorite name. Terrible. But, but it's a folding phone. And it's a it's OnePlus's first folding phone. Debatable, if you can call it that, because Oppo, their sister company, has about Many folding four folding phones. phones so. Yeah. But, but it's the it's the first OnePlus folding phone, and I did the review of it. It's out already. I think it's a really good folding phone, and we'll get to also Meta smart glasses as well, and maybe the Quest Three a little bit. But calling it OnePlus Open infers that all of their other OnePlus devices were like yep. really hard to fix, or that they're closed. Well, they are. Right. Well, are closed. they closed? Yeah. I, mean, I would argue they're open, and I would argue this is closed. Why are they open? Because oh you can see the screen God. and it's there. You open He's it. right. It's open for business. That's what it is. Am I right or is David right? No, no, you're right. You're goddamn right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> that is closed. <laughs> this is closed. That's closed. I know. One plus closed. Yeah, but now. Wait, open, open it. it up. Yeah, but. One plus open. open. I think it's not a terrible name. Um, it's, wait. It's you just know what is terrible? One plus, is your screen your broken pixels. already? Yep. yep. No way. Yeah, yeah. way, baby. Yeah. Wow, way. So let's just give you the, the high level overview. So it's, it's OnePlus's first folding phone. It is a relatively normal size outside screen. It's a 6.3 inch 1080p ish LTPO outside screen with a. But LTPO 2. LTPO f- on the outside. 2 on the outside down, down to 10, 10 hertz. hertz. Yeah. 2,800 nits max brightness. It's the new Ooh. brightest screen I've ever seen in a phone, and it's awesome. I love these bright screens we're getting. That took like two weeks. Yeah, right? That was, yeah, because the Pixel 8 in my pocket was the previous champ for brightest screen I've ever seen in a well, phone. But I love that. Find X6 Pro is 100 nits brighter than Pixel. Sorry, fair. Okay. <laughs> fact check. Top three. Good fact check. Top three. But uh, it's got the alert slider. It's got this huge camera bump on the back. They've been doing all these like reveal, the like teaser videos and giving people exclusives of like looking at the phone and they all have to like blur the camera bump as if that's the design of the phone we've seen the phone before but i've been using it for like three weeks now we've seen it the inside screen 7.8 inch uh squarish aspect ratio almost no crease at all i mean you can see it here looking head on Um, almost no yeah really really good inside screen 120 hertz ltpo 3.0 also 2800 nits little corner cut out for the selfie camera um Really, really good looking screen if yeah. you ignore the dead pixels. Speaking of the hinge and not really being able to see the crease, um, our friend Michael Fisher, friend of the show, Mr. Mobile, <laughs> did a very good video where he went to Oppo's headquarters in China and did that. a whole breakdown of the hinge. Um, yeah. They reduced the parts down to 69 parts from like 100 and nice. something. Nice. There it high. is. Yep. And um, yeah, you should watch that video. It's a very good video. Yeah. Just saying, looking at this phone, happy birthday, Marquez is dead. Yeah. Wow. It's my dad's birthday. I hope I messed something up. Nice. Happy birthday, Mr. Brownlee. Sorry, interrupted that one. But just like calendar big things, dad's birthday right on there. That's today as we record this. But uh, it's $1,700. Yeah. It is their most expensive phone ever. Honestly, my initial take is like, okay, wow, this is a really good first gen foldable First if you can call foldable. it that, <laughs> because this is basically the same as the Oppo Find N3, it's which is Oppo's same phone. fourth foldable. Yeah, I don't know. Like they've that. done flips. They've done folds. Yeah. 
Um, but it, f- it kind of fits right in between the Samsung candy bar shape and the Pixel Fold Passport shape. Yeah. It's like right in between those. Yeah. And I really like it. I like the flat sides. I like the, the alert slider. I like the flat or uh, the power button being the fingerprint reader. Yeah. A lot of good things about this phone. Yeah. That being said, as you noticed, Andrew, um, yeah. there is a little tiny bug-sized dot on the bottom of my screen that appeared a couple days ago. It hasn't grown yet. But it probably eventually will, considering it wasn't there. That's <laughs> basically that's more than just like a dead pixel. That's like multiple pixels. It looks like there's a small fly. I on thought my I tried screen. to take like swipe it away because I thought right. it was like a piece of food. That's or what something. I at first did when it first showed up. That's really bad. Um, um, it's right around the hinge. Uh, and you know, I reviewed this phone. I talk about what's good and what's bad about it. The cameras are solid. It's got this huge, huge. Yeah. Uh, camera circle on the back. Um, Is it th- reminiscent of a black hole? Lumptuous uh, like a black hole or whatever I, they call that? Uh, yeah, I eleven. Guess. It's, oh. it's the, <laughs> Is that what they say? No, they, said, of, they said it was like irresistible, just like a black oh, hole, I th- which wow. I found very funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah. It's a Hasselblad camera. It's got a 3X telephoto. It's got an ultra wide. It is a decent set of cameras, I would say. Um, nothing like remarkable or game changing, but I generally found I really liked using the phone, and my conclusion was like, all right, this is a really good phone, but if I just end it there, that doesn't mean people should buy the phone. It turns out a phone can be really good and still not something that most people should buy because, number one, price, 1700 bucks for a phone. Number two, yeah. durability, questionable. You know, not everyone's going to break every folding phone they own, but it's still, no matter how many millions of tests you do with the hinge, and we saw everything they try to do with Mr. Mobile's video, you still have yeah. moving parts. Like, there's still yeah. some risk there. And then number three, <clears throat> I found it surprisingly hard to convince regular people that a folding phone is something they should even care about. Yeah. Power users, we love folding phones. I see a lot of flips out in the wild, but yeah. I've only seen, like, three folds ever. Yeah. I've seen a single Recruit. digit number of folding phones in yeah. my life yeah. out in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interestingly, if you, uh, if you buy this phone on OnePlus.com, you can send in literally any phone in any condition, and they will give you a $200 credit towards it. Um, Fisher asked in the briefing, if I set my Nexus 4 on fire <laughs> and send it to you in a box, will you still give me the $200 credit? And they said yes. They actually said yes. Yes. So we were like speculating on on this. We were like, hmm. did they actually only need to charge like 1500 for this phone, but they were trying to make it look more premium? Because in my opinion, <clears throat> getting folding phones just as cheap as possible, like lowering the price as much as possible of folding phones is a, is more important to sell more folding phones than making it f- seem premium. Yeah, it's kind of a psychology thing. When you see a price tag of $1,700, you kind of just assume a bunch of things about it. But that's also in the price category where I'm like, I would never pay that much for a phone ever. Right. You know? I would also like... I see what you're talking about. I do think getting it lower is super important, but I think someone who would pay 1500 would also pay 1700 So, like, I wonder if that's making a huge difference between that price range, or if you could get it down to, man, even 1200 is insane for a phone, but there are plenty of non-folding phones plenty. out there that are $1,200, and they're not even top of the, lot, the, like, best spec all the time. So That's the thing. I wonder if 15 to 17 is, like, if you've just gotten ready to do that. Or maybe they just want to harvest the lithium out of the phones that you send in. The old ones. Well, if it's on fire, I don't know if well, you're... <laughs> they're not requesting that you send it on fire. Yeah. But they would still take it. It's, it's there's a couple of good points you guys bring up. Number one is this one has to live in a lineup, so it has to have a price that's alongside all the rest of the phones that this company makes. So in a sense, the lowest you can charge is whatever your most expensive phone is. So if you have, if you're OnePlus and you have a $900 phone, like... You obviously can't go below 900 for this. Why does that have to be true, though? Well, that brings me to the other point, okay. which is if I combine all of the parts of this phone, it, it does feel like it's at least a $900 phone. Yeah. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the yeah. 16 gigs of RAM, the half sure. a terabyte of UFS 4.0 storage. Yeah, this is at least a $1,000 phone. The really, really good 6.3-inch outside LTPO screen at 2,800 nits. 
Like yeah. the performance, the battery, the 67 watt fast charging, all this stuff. No, By the way, no doesn't, wireless charging. It doesn't have wireless charging. It's such a OnePlus thing. Yeah. But like if I just put together all that stuff and this 7.8 inch inside screen. Premium leather back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Fake Sarcasm. Leather, it's awful. Leather. Horrible fake leather. <laughs> It feels like it's at least a nine hundred dollar phone. I'll agree with that. I mean, okay. and the yeah. engineering has to go into the R and D and the hinge and all that stuff. Remember when people used to compare phones strictly based on specs, and they'd be like, "Oh, but it doesn't have as high of a spec of this as this one." This phone does have all the highest specs: sixteen yep. gigs of RAM, twenty eight hundred nit display. Yeah, like that's at least a thousand dollar phone. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, I guess when you first said that. I was like, why does a folding phone have to? Because like there are pros and cons of a folding phone versus a normal phone. So like if we were getting to that point where folding phones were the similar prices to just flagships, that would be a great thing. Because then you're just making the choice on do I want folding or do I not want folding? And not right. having to be like, oh, I want folding, but I don't want to spend 500 more dollars on yeah. it. So yeah. So my theory was folding phones are going to be finally allowed to hit mainstream when they are literally just a regular phone that happens to fold, which means they have to also be as thin as a regular phone when they're folded up. They have to be the same price as a regular phone. There's a lot that goes into getting them down so to price. So that's happening with the flips because the flips had, Samsung finally hit $1,000 with the flip mm -hmm. with flagship specs, I yeah. mean, around flagship specs. And now the Razer 40, um, the non-Ultra is a $600 phone. It just launched for 600 bucks and it's a yeah. flip. So yeah. like that's like that's like yeah. mid range phone pricing territory, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. it's a flipping phone. And also like there's like a techno phantom flip or something that's also around six hundred dollars. But yeah. So it seems like the flips are getting down <laughs> They're getting range way cheaper. much more. These yeah. haven't gone down at all. The first yeah. Galaxy Fold launched at eighteen hundred, they're all still eighteen hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that, that is, weird? That is wild. The first one was like, we get it. This is a total <laughs> test. Let's yeah. see what happens. And it broke. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. Now we're on the fifth one, right? Yeah. And it's still how it's is that not going down? That's, I agree. Yeah. I remember reviewing the first one. I was like, guys, I know it's a thick <laughs> phone. I know it's got crazy bezels, but it folds in half. Like, Can we appreciate that this thing folds in half? All the engineering and risk that it went into making this crazy thing. Mm -hmm. And then Gen 2, we were like, all right, it's a little more refined now. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Good. I can see the improvements. The direction is positive. And then Gen 3, you were like, all right. Ultra thin glass. All right. It's even more refined. And then Gen 4 was like, I think it. I think it's different. And then Gen 5, it's like, I literally hold it up to the it's next exactly to the old one. I'm like, I think the, key, like, the flash move. We made it slightly flatter. Like the, the, the hinge is a little bit thinner and like they're really refining little by little on that. Yeah. And it, the, the price is just rock solid. Yeah. At it's like the four and the five of the Samsung series are almost exactly the yeah. same. The three yeah. they did do a bunch because the three was the like under display uh, uh, selfie camera. Selfie camera. Yeah. And like, which yeah. that felt like where they added by all the way. <laughs> at all. Still garbage. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it is what it is. It seems like the folds are all kind of hovering. The Pixel Fold is also 1800 Like, they're yeah. all kind of in this area where... Also, is it even... That's the thing. It's like inflation. <laughs> is, it even, <laughs> is it even possible for a folding phone to get down to the price of a regular phone? Because if it ever does, that means all the components of a regular phone, which there are less of, are now cheaper. Like, if I have a high-end folding phone, which has two screens, uh -huh. a split battery, and a hinge, if that gets to 900 bucks then that means a high-end phone is less than 900 bucks because it has one screen, one battery, and no hinge. Yeah, but the technology is advancing and potentially getting cheaper to manufacture. Like, if they if they created a new technology, as the years go by, that type of technology might get cheaper over the years, right? Yeah, I just think the best you can do is reduce the difference in price. It will never be the same or less Yeah, because it's two screens. Yeah. And two batteries yeah but the okay but you could say like the z flip 5 which has two screens right because mm -hmm. it's got the screen on the front and the interior screen sure those are getting cheaper they're getting cheaper but if you if you tasked samsung with their same supply chain to make a phone without two screens with the same specs it would cost less right if you put the same yeah almost flagship cameras that they put in that phone if you put the same size battery and it's just a regular slab phone that would be an s23 fe right yeah so it would cost less I would say, comparing this to a Z Fold 5, I would buy this over a Z Fold 5 any day because I like the form factor better. It's got better specs in general. It's got the alert yeah. slider. It's got better software, in my opinion. It's got that cool little black dot on the screen. It's got that on the inside. That dead pixel on the inside. That's really dope. 
Um, it's not the smallest I mean, issue with this game. I think this seen. feels great. I think it looks awesome. The specs obviously are cool. The but if I'm charging seeing, is a bummer, though. It is a bummer. But if I'm seeing this this early on, yeah. that's a huge red flag. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, though, it's not on. I haven't gotten it yet. And this is reminiscent of when the Pixel Fold came out and Ram Amadeo's Pixel Fold broke yeah. on like day two. That's the thing about But these. nobody else's seemed to. Remember, I had the Pixel Fold here after like a week on the beach in Chicago and, and I had fine. no problems. And yeah. then I've had this for like two and a half, three weeks and babied it. And I cannot believe anything has gotten under that's... the screen. Like I haven't been in any weird conditions. Do you think something's under the screen? Do you think that's entropy? what happened? I think some. I mean, it's dead pixels. So something had to. I mean, this hinge though looks. From all the hinges that I've seen, this looks one looks great. the hardest to get something on the inside yeah. of. Also, let's do a little ASMR snap. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. Nice Ooh. clamshell. Wow. How many more pixels did I break doing that? <laughs> I've th I just think it's weird Magic. that... <laughs> yeah, so it's it looks so much better than the first-gen foldables. Like, yeah. this is yeah. a hinge that you don't think anything can get in. It has IPX4 water resistance. Oh. If you showed this to me, like, five years ago, I'd be like, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> This is yeah. incredible. So they've come a long way, yeah. but with any of these weird like screen issues, like you said, it's kind of just bad luck. Like, yeah. it's Dude, just if I spent eighteen hundred dollars and that happened, I'd be in three pretty weeks, mad. I would be furious. I think the question would be, how will and OnePlus you... support these phones? Like, can you get a screen replacement? Do you? Is there a warranty that will cover just the random screen breaks near the hinge that are going to happen to some people? They Hopefully. ask you to set this one on fire and ship it to them and then get <laughs> yeah, 200, bucks, I guess 200, 200, bucks, 200 off. bucks off the next one. Yeah. It yeah. is what it is. But it's out there. Watch the video. I think it covers a lot. A lot of the thoughts we have, a lot of the thoughts about other folding phones. I think I'd say the same as you. I would take this over the Samsung any day. Yeah. But I would take the Pixel Fold. Which is funny. That's a conversation I was thinking about. I was like, the Pixel Fold is technically worse in every way. Um, but I like the form factor better. And the UI is just so enjoyable that... I would, I would take, take the Pixel Fold over this. I would also. Yeah. 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 Buy a hair. But the I take them both is, over The Samsung. screen is way worse on the Pixel Fold, but I would still take it. I even talked about that Honor Magic 2. Yeah. I would take that hardware over Samsung's. Mm. So it's all out there. Can't wait for Pixel Fold 5. The evolving world. Oh, we're getting <laughs> the... You mean Z Fold 5? No. Pixel Fold 5. Yes. Oh, in like five years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. I'm also excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about these these glasses. This is the other, this is the other piece of hardware we got this week. These, um, oh, nice. David's got his too. These are the, <laughs> did you just chime when you put them on? Uh-huh. So these are the Meta Smart Glasses. <laughs> it has multiple stages of connecting to your phone. It's like, we're on. The Bluetooth is connected. Battery's connected. Brain is connected. Brain is connected. <laughs> <laughs> Neuralink, <laughs> Neuralink <laughs> engaged. <laughs> okay. These ones are transition lenses, which oh, is interesting. I just interesting. started playing music. Oh. <laughs> Wait, they are transition? Yeah, I thought yeah. they were just clear. No, check this out. I thought they were just clear, too. I went apple picking this weekend, and I put them on, and I thought my friends were going to be like, David, you don't wear glasses. What are you doing? Are you being lame again? And then um, what actually happened was they looked like this. And for audio listeners, they turn into regular sunglasses. <laughs> oh, they did. Wow. Yeah, they transitioned to regular sunglasses. And that's so, so let me cool. explain what everyone we're loves transition. Oh yeah, we don't <laughs> <laughs> We even explain what these actually okay, are. Okay. So we're wearing some glasses. So Meta made smart glasses in collaboration with Ray Bans. If you've seen Second Ray Bans, yeah, if you've seen Ray Bans sunglasses, they've been popular and expensive and well known for a while. Hundreds of years. Then Ray Bans Stories came along. That was the first gen. This is the second gen from Meta. This is a pair of sunglasses that inside of them has a camera, some microphones, some speakers, a computer, a touchpad on the side, and some batteries to keep it powered for a couple hours, mm -hmm. and a shutter button on top for your photos and videos. And it looks kind of just like a normal pair of sunglasses. Almost exactly like a regular pair of sunglasses. Like this is one oh. of their styles and <laughs> this is how <laughs> this is how it would look out the box if you didn't see the sort of a semi clear thing on the side you or wouldn't the even know or the cameras. That there's some tech in there and and the other cameras. Yeah. So this is what they would look like and you could walk around take first person videos and do a whole bunch of computing. Yeah. On these. The photo and video quality is really good by the way. Yeah, 12 okay. megapixel cameras. So I'll say I agree. The, Sorry. Yeah. Not the to first jump person. Again. Yeah. I, I fully, I think that's the number one thing people are going to want to do with this is first person photos and videos. Yeah. And I think they're, they're surprisingly good quality. They are vertical, vertically oriented. I guess the sensor is 
for Instagram oriented. stories and stuff. It perfectly matches shooting on your phone and vertical. Makes sense. I wish I could also shoot horizontal, but it doesn't work so Just well. Just do this. Yeah, I thought about that. <laughs> While you're driving. Because I, I was like, oh, I could do an autofocus video, <laughs> and this would be my first person. This is the best first-person driving camera ever made. Yeah. We played ping pong on it, and it's really well stabilized, and it's got good color. Yeah. Sorry, it made a noise when I put them on. Yes, it's supposed it did. to, yeah. It yeah. scared me. So, <laughs> so that's number one, is like nice first-person camera. That's the number one best thing people are going to do with it. Number two is the speakers are surprisingly good. Yeah. They are these little two slot speakers on the things that like project downward into your ears. Like right into your ear canal. And it's Bluetooth connected to my phone. So if I were to play music right now, Andrew's wearing them right now, and I can hit play. Just don't get us demonetized. And underneath your headphones, you may be able to hear the music. take me higher? (laughs) Not what I'm playing. (laughs) So... The idea is without any headphones on, you can actually listen to music. You can be on the phone. You can be listening to voice prompts and things like that. Uh, And no one would ever know because you don't even have earbuds in. What I was surprised about when you were trying them is despite it not being like a closed ear earbud or it's not even bone conduction, right? It's just no. So I could I like couldn't hear you listening to things, but it was loud enough for you to not be able to hear what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. So at half volume, half volume, I can hear everything. No one around me can hear what I'm listening to. Yeah. At yeah. max volume, everyone around me can hear it mm-hmm. as if I'm listening to earbuds at max volume. Yeah. Or like open back headphones. Open back headphones. They're like bleeding a lot. Mm-hmm. Or like bone connection. Headphones. But I truly am like, that's loud. Mm-hmm. It's like loud. I never, yeah. I never listen that loud. So, so it's got the mic. It's got the earbuds. That's awesome. You can control the music with the swipes, control the volume, play, pause, all that stuff. But, you know, it is a computer on your face, and it is attached to the internet and to your phone. So the last kind of interesting thing that it can do is act as a computer, but there is no screen. So everything you're doing is through audio. So the best way to do that is with an audio assistant, a voice assistant. Yeah. And so you can say, hey, Meta, and ask it to do things, ask it to read you things, and it will use the internet connection on your phone to do so. It uses Meta's... Llama. A, uh, Llama, their Llama language too. model to to figure out what it's going to do. So you can like ask it to take a picture or take a video, which is cool. And it works very quickly, which is awesome. Can we take awesome. a video right now? Yeah, try it. Say, hey, Meta. Hey, hey Meta. Uh, take a video. Take a video. Oh, I can see it. Fl- oh, there's a little flashing light on there's the inside, flash. so I can tell. Yeah, so on I'm the inside. Recording. We're this, both recording. This is other. what the podcast looks like. This is for what the those, podcast looks this like. This is first person view. Yeah, POV. <laughs> this is what it's You're like to Andrew. Be. Me and uh, Andrew. <laughs> and this is what you look like when you when you shoot videos with your sunglasses. <laughs> but yeah, so you can do that. But you can also just ask it, hey, what's the other? Hey, what's a fact? Like ask it how ask what? it a random like Google something and it'll do it. You can ask it to write you a letter, ask it to explain something to you. Um I think we did also see an example of something in the keynote of like coming later. Mm-hmm. It will use the camera to analyze what's in front of you. So you yeah. can ask it about the thing in Y'all- front of you. Damn, that was pretty a loud start. clap. Holy <laughs> hell. I'm, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> this seems like an actually very useful thing. The natural language processing, st- that was a really good clap. It was a good clap. <laughs> it was a scary clap. I'm just like, natural language computers. Being able to talk to a computer and not have to talk with specific keywords to make it work, and then also being able to be multi multimodal and an- an- analyze stuff around you. Yeah. This is the type of like face-worn computer that we've been like, dreaming about for decades yeah as long as you get past the fact that facebook constantly has a camera and a microphone oh we forgot it was facebook shut it all down (laughs) (laughs) i do we just need to put that disclaimer out there that if you're accepting this you're accepting a facebook microphone and camera on your face at all times that is a fact (laughs) oh wow that is a fact (laughs) yeah and we've been walking around just enjoying it not thinking twice about it trojan horse but through ray bands they've (laughs) tried many trojan horses though you know, what's the Facebook portal? They've tried many Trojan horses. That, yeah, that one worked for old people. Yeah. This one's going to work for fashionable people. Yeah. Just think about it. I mean, the thing is, they look enough like normal sunglasses, yeah. and they cost about the same amount as really nice sunglasses. Shockingly I mean, Ray-Bans aren't cheap, yeah. Yeah. They're $2.99 yeah. $2, $2. or something, which is, like, more expensive than regular Ray-Bans, <laughs> but not by a ton. I went to Ray-Bans' site and sorted by most expensive. There are... <laughs> Dozens and dozens and dozens of sunglasses that cost more than these. Yeah, okay. Tons. I thought you could say more than $1,000. I, I yeah. do have to say, I weirdly like the, the like, clear seeing some of the, like, 
processing yeah. units inside of it and the speakers and stuff. This yeah. is like a clear, not like a nothing phone clear, but like it looks good. Translucent. Yeah. You might say. Yeah. It looks really good. It's lightweight. Um, here's my one gripe I have about them. And maybe I, I want to make sure this is correct. When you're recording, it's just this light that goes on, right? Yep. That should be a red light. A blinking red light. Because I the agree. whole thing should be if this is a privacy issue of being worried that people around you are going to be recording you. A white light is not enough to warn somebody around you that like this is potentially a recording video. I know that's why they put it there to mm -hmm. be like to get ahead of the like, well, there are there privacy concerns? Are you potentially being filmed all the time? You guys were wearing these before and had the white light on and I was just like I don't know what that necessarily means it's doing. I think that means it's recording, but didn't the old ones have a red light or am I mistaken on that? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. I'd be curious. Maybe if not. That... I very well might be making that up. It should 100% be a blinking red light. So even a solid red light, if you walk by, you might just be like, well, is there like a glowing thing on that guy's class? But blinking red makes me think like that person's taking video of me right now. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like that, I can leave. Right. I don't know. That feels like way too subtle not enough of a a real like warning to be honest i've been around people and actually mostly david <laughs> recording <laughs> and i see i don't even see the white light and i realize later mm -hmm. that it yeah. was on so yep. it is a very subtle thing yeah it's too subtle. subtle so when i was upstate um with my friends i was i took a recording of my friend who was uh and i was at, oh you can't hear it because it's connected to the headphones but i was trying to I was trying to make it obvious I was recording, so I was like, what do you think of the apples? How much? Uh, on a what scale of what? A scale of... He was really confused while I was asking him these questions. The good ones? They're great, yeah. He was like, why are you asking <laughs> he me He had no things? idea why I was asking him these questions, and then I, I was like, oh, I'm recording you right now. And he's like, what? <laughs> so even though there's a light on, he didn't notice. Yeah, it's not enough of a light. Blinking red light, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. I don't like that. Fascinating. So... Now that these are out and they're going to be out in the real world, who knows how many people are going to buy these and use these and what they'll use them for. But the video that I chose to make was sort of combining this with the Oculus, the, uh, the MetaQuest 3, mm -hmm. because they seem like they're on opposite ends of the technology limit spectrum and, and aiming at Collapsing. the other side at each other. Yeah. So what I mean by that is... This is as much technology as we can fit in glasses without them looking like more than glasses. The second we want to put more tech in them, the only limiting factor is can we put that tech in there and it'll still look like regular glasses. Bigger battery, more powerful computer, extra features, whatever, we'll do it as long as it still looks like normal glasses. And this is the benchmark. And they will keep adding stuff more and more and more until it's a crazy, amazing virtual computer on your face. I would say we've we've seen smart sunglasses before, mostly just speakers in them. Um, Simple. And the like, what are these called? This is ambient. The stalks. Computer. What are these? Stocks. What are the ear things I'm called? Stalks. Stem. Stalk, stem. 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 Stalks. The part that goes behind your ear. Ear stem. Are usually really thick and really obvious. These are thick. I can't imagine it being any bigger than this. I'm okay with this, and it's it's since it's so lightweight, it's okay. But like, it has to fit into this form factor. If it gets any bigger than this, you've lost it as a, exactly. a smart sunglasses. I so think. now think of that. This is the glasses. All we're trying to do is add more and more and more to this pair of glasses without making it more than glasses. The goal is to have glasses that have amazing computing. Yeah. Now the other side, VR, like the Quest headset. Their goal with that is like, all right. We have this whole big bulbous thing on your head, head and we've put in all that we want to. We have pass-through cameras, we have sensors, we have controllers, we have all this stuff. And the goal with those is to reduce them in size over and over and over so that we keep all the same functionality, but shrink them down more and more until it's just a tiny little headset, and then it's just a little visor, and then eventually it's just a pair of glasses. Yeah. The same goal of having all of the computing and it, in a pair of glasses. Especially because the MetaQuest 3 is like a big pivot towards mixed reality first. Exactly. A, a, a virtual reality second. And the thing about mixed reality is it kind of feels potentially like a stepping stone on the way to glasses that can project in your vision with AR, VR. I don't know if that's like really how the tech will work in the future, but the idea behind pass-through and mixed reality is it's your world with virtual elements in it. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to try to get this Oculus Quest thing. I keep saying Oculus. We're going to get the Quest thing smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just a normal pair of glasses, your world with virtual elements. Yeah. And this is doing the same thing. Normal pair of glasses, adding more and more text. So you keep, that's my that's my theory. Is they're like they're going to just Correct. race to the middle, and whichever one hits first wins, and the other one will just turn into that, and that'll be the what's it's like the when animal. It's, it's like when two stars or black holes start like rotating around each other, closer and closer until they become a supermassive black hole. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. I Same love space thing. references. Yeah. Yeah, is that what happens? Spinning yeah, around like yeah. the new YouTube when they comments. collide. Yeah, cl- so black holes that collide become supermassive black but holes. But one of them wins, right? No, they merge. Well, because if they spin, well, one of them, them yeah. it's like one of them has to absorb the other. If they're roughly the same size, the slightly bigger one, or it depends on the angle. Yeah, the bigger of the one has more gravity, but it's it still has an infinite amount of mass. There are different levels of infinite. True, of mass. true, true, true. <laughs> Quick, so yeah, perceivably large. We're not entirely sure. Well, how yeah, we've seen, we've, but we've watched it. We've <laughs> watched black. We have holes. watched how black holes collide and yeah. become supermassive. Because David is wearing glasses, so I'd I'd listen to him. On this. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. He does look smart <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's that's my theory. And there's a col- there's a photo of someone who took all the parts off of a Quest Three until it was just like the the computer slash screens, mm-hmm. and it's not that big. Yeah. So like, it's not that much bigger than these. It's it's kind of like goggles. Yeah, I guess projecting onto this into the lenses will be <clears throat> the biggest. I mean, or they could go step. the the Google Glass RIP so many freaking years mm. ago route and just be like little display in the corner. You could put a projector on your body somewhere too. <laughs> Trivia. Dude. All right. Oh, we need our boards. All right. So quick update on the score. Marquez yes, with 11. Andrew with two, three, carry the one. Seven. David with 10. Question one. I think I might just sit this one out. Pikachu. What two games originally launched Ow. with the N64? Never mind, this doesn't work. Give me a marker, Marcus. Wii Sports. <laughs> <laughs> N64. This is a nice Need for record. Speed. No comment. I'm just gonna make up two random answers. I forget if I had this one. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's between these two, I think. It must have been an NHL Blitz. <laughs> I can, oh, there's this other game that's a wild old that's game that I kind of think Wait, it might... Wait, oh, I can't change it, can I? Flip him and read, I'm boys. Sorry. What'd you write, Marcus? Mario's, Mario's Mansion. Mansion. <laughs> that's just wrong on so many levels. <laughs> what did you write? I wrote oh. Ocarina of Time. Oh, wow. Pokemon Snap. Wow. Nope. I wrote Mario 64. Oh, wow. I'm a How did you not post? How did you? I, that's what I thought we were. I'm so and I wrote stupid. Wave Runner. I think it's Pokemon So Stadium. Wave Runner was one of the ones that was announced, but it was delayed at the time of launch. Okay. Is it also called Wave Runner 64? It's or? also okay. called Wave Race. Wave Race. Was Pokemon Thank Stadium you. also Thank a launch you. game? No. Wait, is it Glover? <laughs> There's Glover? a game called Glover. What? No. <laughs> what does that mean? Don't Google that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? No, you're a glove. Whoa. Yeah. You're oh, like, I do remember that game. <laughs> That's epic. You're just a glove and like imagine your fingers as arms you're and like a feet Mickey Mouse and you glove. roll around on a ball. Wait, can I tell you the answers first? Yes. Uh, so it was Super uh, Mario 64. Okay. The other one you guys missed was Pilot Wings 64. Uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, they ha- yeah it's All a right, flying So what's game. your theoretical? Oh, man. My theoretical... Um, okay. Imagine how creative people would be if we all suddenly were able to see an additional color, okay? You have that in your head? Now, okay. that's how creative these motherfuckers were when they discovered 64 bits. Am I right? You can be a glove. (laughs) (laughs) Question two. (laughs) Incredible. You know, be, be a club, be a glove equals new. Color. I'm just like that's a game. We don't do that anymore. We should really do that. That's Ooh, true. To have like crazy games. Yeah, we I don't know. There's like bits. a dinosaur sword fighting. How game many bits that we just got? Came out. We got 64. There's some so. cool glove we should games coming out. Bits. But how many of them are glove themed? We're just gonna discover. Unlock a new a great game. Of our creativity. Yeah, new color, new dimension, new glove. 
In 2009, <laughs> YouTube introduced an experimental lightweight version of their site. Oh, no, you wrote it down already. What was it called? For bonus points, name every old color of the subscribe button. YouTube Ozempic. Name the top three most liked YouTube videos of all time. <clears throat> Going to the zoo. Are you just making up your own qu trivia questions now? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, got it. Now, what's the most disliked? I know one of them. For YouTube's lightweight player, which was called... Who wants to read first? Mark has probably got it right, so... I wrote YouTube Go. Oh. oh. I wrote you Tube, like the number two. <laughs> Like T2. <laughs> like tube. Oh, uh, that looks like you lube to me. <laughs> anyway, you YouTube light. The oh. answer was YouTube feather. <laughs> That's terrible. Y'all need YouTube. To... Y'all need to make better feather. names. YouTube Mark feather. Mark looks straight YouTube weekend go. at Bernie's right now. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube Go was the more recent version of that. Of Wait, their light Mark version. Has, but not the first one. <laughs> Bro, did it twice? <laughs> it did it twice? <laughs> Wait, they did it twice? Wait, what was the second one? What was the second Go, one? the one Mark has said. Wait, was Go is the version. second version? Oh my god. From August 2022, YouTube Go. Mark has they, like, that, was that recent ago? I don't remember that, was, that at no, all. It, was, it, it left in August 2022. Oh. Left what? It, they killed it? Yeah, they killed it. Where was it before that? <laughs> what? Huh. Okay. I don't know what it was. I've never heard of YouTube Go. And it was, it was like alive till 2022. Apparently they announced it in 2016 for and people it left with, in 2022. For people with like way worse internet connections or like limited data, you would download the separate YouTube Go app and it would have like basically all the same videos, but like super, super low bit rate it's, streaming. Oh. Hmm. hmm. I thought that's... Oh. I, uh, I airdropped you the original Google blog post. Oh, uh, just rubbing salt in the wound now? Oh, sorry, bro. I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> well. Uh, All right, question number wow. two. We love it here. We think of the big innovation of the N64 to be 64-bit 3D graphics, but in 1997, the N64 introduced what? Now essential smartphone feature. Smartphone feature to its controllers. Oh, that's not right at all. Jeez. If I'm right, I have a slight issue with this the way this question is worded. Okay. Come at me, bro. If you're right, it doesn't matter. That's not. It's not wireless controllers, right? It was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think they're telling the truth. <laughs> they definitely, there are no wireless controllers, yeah. as far as I know. I don't have an answer. All right, all right, all right. What yeah, do we got here? I'll do this because it's stupid. haptics. Yeah, I wrote vibration motor slash haptics. So Same. they didn't add it to the controller. It was an accessor. It was an accessory. Yeah, they added it. The next the year after it came out, it didn't get added to the controller though. It was an accessory. Like you couldn't buy a controller with haptics. You bought a controller, and there's a thing that plugged into the back. Yeah, and you're, adding, yeah, you're adding it. You just uh, said add you haptics. Added you're haptics. mating it. Say, oh, okay. I guess. Mark. I got it right. Who cares? Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Marquez put And yeah, it's called the Rumble You pack. put encryption and Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> encryption. <laughs> so, so that's been it. Thanks for, uh, for listening to us talk about hardware, software, new gadgets, new features. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for this for a while, so I'm excited to announce that next week's episode will be entirely YouTube history trivia. That's super exciting for me and <laughs> for everyone else involved. Super pumped about that. Minus five points. Um, but uh, until the next one, next week, catch you later. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Melina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vane Set. What about OnePlus Open? Yeah, we're going to do that after. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Is this skin? No. No. That's the That's default. a great reaction. I, did we get that on camera? Yeah. That's the first time you've seen that leather version? Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm not the wow. biggest fake leather on the back of a phone person, this but sucks. David's had the glass one, yeah. and it is slightly thinner. thinner than this, so everything protrudes more. 